I am at Cobb Tuning today here in Austin, Texas. You can see that blue BRZ behind me. My white BRZ is over there and it's about to go in there on that dyno to do some R&D testing. Mike, if you don't mind real briefly, what is our objective today? The car is 100% stock, by sure. the way. Yeah, so part of the objective is to just see if your vehicle exhibits a behavior that the Cobb vehicle is, which is we get the car up to operating temperature, but the engine oil and gearbox oil aren't necessarily fully hot. Um, and we start running the car, and as you run the car, and the engine oil temperature and the gearbox oil temperature go up, the uh, viscosity of the fluid changes, it thins out, it gets, um, you know, uh, basically it resists motion less, and we start to see the power of the car come up. And when we look at the data logs, we're not flowing more air, it's not running different timing, their fuel ratio is the same. The only real difference is everything got hot, and that's causing a very large increase in power. So. What we're finding is um, things that might seem like a gain are really just the car getting hot. So we need to run the car about six times in a row um, to get it to that hot point. And I just want to see if your car does the same thing. Um, and then also compare the 2023 stock tune to the 2022 stock tune on the Cobb vehicle and just see what the differences are. For what it's worth, the stock tune is pretty aggressive. Like I said, it doesn't really leave anything on the table. Um, it did have one degree of knock on that first pull, and that's super common. It's not something I would worry about. It's just something to be aware of. Part of the reason there isn't a whole lot of room to make more power is they've already extracted the power. It's already there. Um, and I assume you have 93 in the tank? Yeah. Right, so we're already on the best pump fuel we can get. So um, yeah, that's it. We'll just keep running it, we'll get it hotter and see what happens. I guess 220, I was pretty close. And your assumption is that a few pulls from now it might be higher than that? That's what we're gonna find out. But yeah, that's what the other car does. So let's see, All right. call this pull one. So it's really cold today. I suspect that's why it's power is going up so slowly. slowly yeah. But we'll see where it stops. did end up having to run the car at highway speed for several minutes to get the tires to not spin though. Oh, well, right. So your temperature is <laughs> yeah, already, yeah. Uh, and, and the first actual pull I did, did only make 207. So we have gone up quite a lot. 
Well, I mean, 223 at the wheels, if I remember from videos I watched a few months ago of people initially dynoing their cars, mm -hmm. that was the number of people were claiming to make when tuned, if I remember right. And people yeah. were making 207 stock, so that or in that okay. ballpark. So yeah. even if that's all it gets to, it still kind of seems to match the whole, like, you know, difference. just sit with the fan blowing on it while we were chatting it cooled down enough that the power actually started to go down again what that says run three where's run five sorry yeah they're, they're out of sequence now so uh -oh. where it says run number two i've written four five uh -oh. that was actually the most recent hold so it lost a it, it lost a hair just from us like sitting and chatting and the fan blowing and sure. the car down interesting yeah yeah, on the cop car, I've actually, like, done a simulated quarter mile pass on the car to get it, like, really toasty. And if I do a single gear pull after that, I'll get, like, another horsepower. But yeah, I think we're good for today. Cool. Sweet. Thanks. I think it's a good idea to finish off the video with a detailed recap of the actual data that we gathered on the dyno but also some clarification on what our intentions are for making this video and doing the testing to begin with. I can see how there could be some potential drama or confusion about what the implication of that information is and maybe what you should do with it or think about it, but we'll start off by taking a closer look at the dyno graphs that I've got on my computer right now. All right, let's take a gander at this graph. Before I get into the nitty gritty details, I wanna go over some of the basics of looking at a dyno chart for those that might not be familiar. So you can see two sets of lines, red and blue. There's actually a third set if you look really close. On the far left, you can see some green. That was another pole that was basically identical to the red one, so we won't talk about it anymore. But the blue lines, the one that starts really low and gradually increases from left to right is horsepower. That's the same for the red, of course. And then the one that's more flat, higher up on the graph, is your torque. And the blue line represents our first starting pull at a lower temperature, but it was not cold. The, the car was not just brought in from sitting outside for hours. It had been driven for several minutes and was at normal operating temperature, but it was that lower starting temperature that would be most likely the first pull you would make on a dyno if you were having your car tuned or something like that. And then the red one was subsequently a few pulls later. It's the highest horsepower figure that we got throughout the day before the pulls after that started to plateau or even drop a little bit. So let's start from the far right. You will see that the highest horsepower point of any of this is right at 6,500 RPMs. The red horsepower line is about 223 horsepower. And then on the blue line, it's 207. So that's our biggest difference throughout the pull, but that's not actually as important as a lot of people might like to think. People typically talk about their dyno graphs and they just talk about peak horsepower. But looking at the entire pull, looking at the difference throughout the entire RPM range is how you actually learn what the car's doing and what the differences are and how it's behaving. And I wanna reiterate very specifically, both of these pulls are 100% stock. There is no changes to the tune, nothing on the car. It's the same day, same fuel, same temperature, same people, everything's all the same. The only thing that changed is as we did repeated pulls, the temperatures of the fluids and the engine and all the rotating stuff on the car warmed up. That's why we're seeing this difference. And it's a very significant difference, which is the whole point in this test. If I took this graph and showed it to someone without any additional context and just told them, hey, look, the blue line is my baseline where I started on a stock pull and then we tuned it or I did some kind of modification to the car 
that's what the red line is, they would probably believe me because it, it looks like that. It makes significant power increase. So you would assume that we did something to cause that, but we didn't. The car did that on its own, quite literally. So other areas to look at that kind of stood out to me, that 4,000 RPM infamous power dip is quite prevalent as the car warms up. Uh, it does it a little bit on the lower temperature pull, but not nearly as significantly. Um, but as I kind of mentioned a minute ago, the most important thing is that from about 28, 2900 RPMs all the way up to 65, so the entire width of the power band that you'd actually be using when driving the car aggressively, there is significant improvements in both horsepower and torque pretty much all the way through other than that dip. So that tells us a lot. That's really noteworthy considering nothing on the car has changed. But overall, this is our kind of what we expected to see. The blue Cobb car does the same thing, but even more drastically, but it was also a slightly warmer day. So the reason we wanted to look at this is we want to see if this is a consistent trend from car to car. And I'd also be curious to see what other conditions and variables might affect the results. You know, we live in Texas. We have 93 octane with E10 in the fuel. I have seen some people in other areas, especially on the West Coast, where they have crappier fuel, to be blunt, uh, do multiple pulls on a completely stock car. And it had similar starting numbers, like 205, somewhere around there in horsepower. And it didn't seem to climb as much. I don't know if that's because they let the car cool down a lot in between pulls or if it maybe was the limitation of the octane of the fuel. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to make any final assessments. I'm just, just interesting information to notate how the car behaves as it warms up and how that relates to things that we do in the future as we modify the car or other things that people are investigating on their own. So if you guys see anything uh, that's worth talking about in addition to what I mentioned, drop it in the comments, but uh, I think that's a good short look at the graph. And as for the clarification part of the video, I just wanted to make sure people understand our intentions behind this. It's just data, it's information. We're trying to learn and we're trying to share it with you. This is a new platform, it's a new engine. Even the tuning software has only been out for a few months. So before we get too ahead of ourselves trying to make lots of power and modify things, we wanna really understand the cars and how they behave and how the engine responds to modifications and tuning. And we notice simply that the 2022 car that Cobb has had a weird behavior. If you did repeated pulls, it made power on its own, essentially, and significant power. So we wanted to test that on another car with the same fuel and the same environment, and it did essentially the same thing. So that's not to say that tuning your car is a waste of time or anything like that. We're just trying to learn more. And I'm going to be doing more modifications to this car. I'm going to put headers on it from off-the-line performance. I've got several exhaust layouts that I'm going to try out. I might do ethanol at some point pretty soon, so you guys can follow along in that process and see how the information we learned today applies as we do more changes in the future. So please subscribe to the channel. That's where I'll be sharing all that information. I've also got a dedicated Instagram account just for this car that I'll link here. And if you have any feedback or questions, please comment, You know, post about it on different groups, share the video. Anything you can do will help me as we continue to try to learn, and we'll see you in the next video.